Kavya Kantha Ganapati Muni. It is late 19th century, Navadweep, Bengal. A 14-year-old boy sits amidst a group of scholars, mathematicians, poets, a music maestro, and an astrologer, among others. The mathematicians give him a six-digit number to be multiplied by another six-digit number. One poet recites the last two lines of a Sanskrit verse and challenges the boy to compose the first two lines in the same meter and complete it. The other poet, meanwhile, gives him a subject to immediately compose a four-line Sanskrit verse on. The astrologer places before him a complex pattern of planetary positions and ask him what the consequence will be. The musician hums a few notes of a particularly obscure raga and asks the boy to identify it. Another man rattles off a random date, like February 18th, 1756, and asks what day that was. As if all this weren't enough, Another man stands behind the boy and throws tiny pebbles on his back while the others throw their challenges. The boy is expected to simultaneously keep count of how many pebbles were thrown, and the boy answers them all instantaneously, correctly, brilliantly to the tumultuous applause of a wonderstruck audience. This boy wonder, Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni, would soon win acclaim all over India. His name means one who is steeped in contemplation. He was to later become one of the foremost devotees of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi. Before he was born, his pious parents had no children. His father went to Banaras and prayed at the Ganesha temple there. He had a vision of the idol of Lord Ganesha coming to life and merging with him. At the very same time, back in his village, his wife saw the idol of the goddess in the local temple turn into light and enter her. Soon after, a son was born to the couple. They named him Ganapati, in gratitude to Lord Ganesha. However, to their utter disappointment, the boy could not talk at all. Until the age of five, he remained mute and expressionless. Moreover, he was plagued with many diseases including epilepsy. In a desperate attempt to cure him, they resorted to the age-old practice of branding him with a red-hot iron rod. This treatment had far-reaching effects. The shock unleashed the boy's latent talents, and he became exceptionally brilliant. His retentive power, his concentration, his capacity to imbibe whatever he read, and quote it verbatim, increased manifold. By the age of nine, Ganapati Muni had mastered Sanskrit literature, and by the age of 11, he had memorized all the four Vedas and the Upanishads. When he was 14 years old, Ganapati composed a drama in Sanskrit which is acclaimed even today as one of the best in that language. The ancient scriptures mention that the rishis of yore did penance, and God appeared before them and granted boons or wishes. Strongly influenced by these texts, Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni sought to achieve the same. He got married when he was 18 years old, but his fervor to have God's darshan became more intense. 
He embarked on the long pilgrimage, visited temples as well as all the sacred rivers like the Ganges, and did penance. His penance was rigorous. He remained silent and motionless for long periods and went without food. Though he meticulously observed all the rules of traditional penance, God did not appear before him. When he failed to find God through one method of penance, he tried another method with equal sincerity. With every method failing, Kavyakanta finally took the last resort, doing penance in the five holy places dedicated to Lord Shiva, which represent the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, or space. One must visit each place in a particular order and arrive finally in the place dedicated to fire, Arunachala, where the devotee's penance, his tapas, is said to be rewarded. Kavyakantha followed the necessary rituals in each place and finally reached Arunachala in 1904. During the course of his penance in the Arunachala Swara temple, Ganapati Muni once went up the hill and saw Bhagavan sitting with eyes closed, absorbed in samadhi. Disappointed by Bhagavan's continued silence, he went away. He took up a job as a teacher in a neighboring town called Velour and continued his sadhana. In 1907, he became dejected and felt that his life was futile. Though he had mastered the scriptures and experienced kundalini, he still hadn't found a method that gave him permanent anchorage in the source of Shakti that he called God. He decided and said, I am going again to Arunachala, the final destination for one's search for God, according to the scriptures. If I do not attain God this time, I am going to proclaim that the Vedas, Upanishads, and all the Hindu scriptures are just exaggerations of poetic minds. With this resolve, he returned to Arunachala. A Shiva shrine is located at each of the eight cardinal directions on the Pradakshina, the circumambulation route around Arunachala. Determined to perform his penance to the best of his capacity, Ganapati Muni went southwest to the Nurundalingam shrine. It was surrounded by forests at that time. He took shelter in the hollow of a large dead tree and resumed his severe penance of being silent and going without food. After the fifth or sixth day, the Divine Mother spoke to him with the words, Until you have a guru, you cannot achieve your goal. Your guru is up there on the hill. Surrender at his holy feet, and you will get his grace. Go now 